Last week in Madrid, protesters found a unique way to express their discontent over a new law. That law comes into effect in July and will make many kinds of public gatherings and demonstrations illegal. To make the point that the right to protest in Spain is about to become an illusion, the protesters didn't march. On the Spanish Congress, their holograms did instead. Three years of drastic spending cuts in Spain have seen nonstop protests against austerity, and the center-right government of Mariano Rajoy has clearly had enough. What critics are calling the Le Mordaza, the gag law, muzzles demonstrators and the media that have been covering them. Under this law, photographing, filming, or publishing pictures of police operations can constitute a criminal offense. You can even be prosecuted for a tweet if it contains a hashtag publicizing a political event that the government has not authorized. This is not the first time a Spanish government has been accused of leaning on the state broadcaster TVE over the coverage of a politically sensitive story. And according to the polls, this law is a opposed by more than 80 percent of the Spanish population. In recent months, some senior appointments at TVE have reflected the government's interests. With the rise of the anti-austerity leftist party known as Podemos and with elections just eight months away, protests and their tendency to drive the media narrative are a big part of the Spanish political story. Our starting point this week is Madrid. Con la aprobación de la ley Mordaza, no podrás manifestarte frente al Congreso de los Diputados. No podrás hacer una asamblea en espacios públicos sin peligro de que te multen. No podrás participar en una manifestación sin previo aviso. En definitiva, si eres una persona, no podrás expresarte con libertad. Solo podrás hacerlo si te conviertes en holograma. Únete a la manifestación de hologramas contra la ley Mordaza. That's how protest organizers got the word out, via a website that allowed anyone, anywhere to take their image, convert themselves into an apparition, and march in a virtual way on the Congress in Madrid. The government calls its public security law a law for the 21st century. Its opponents called it a gag law and answered with a protest from the 21st century. I thought the hologram demonstration was very original, a new way to express our opposition to a law that is intended to limit the right to demonstrate and to freedom of expression. Using holograms, they put citizens in the streets where politicians do not want real people to demonstrate. The clear message of this protest is that times have changed, that you can't stem the tide, that people have to express their own opinions, they must say what they think and believe. Although attempts were made to repress expression with laws and regulations, today technology allows people to access information like never before. The organizers, a coalition of more than 100 organizations, succeeded in creating a very original demonstration that gained the attention of television and the digital media. Using holograms, want you to take... Or did they? CNN covered the story, as did RT and Bloomberg, focusing more on the hologram innovation than the law itself. And it's the first virtual rally of its kind. Telecinco, a private channel with Spain's highest rated newscast, did a full report. But TVE, the state-owned broadcaster, covered it in just 29 seconds. And the country's best-known paper, El País, buried the story. The gag law changes the rules of political engagement in Spain. Fail to notify the authorities about a public protest, and it's a 600 euro fine. Protest without permission near parliament and cause disturbances of public safety, and the fine is up to 30,000 euros. Unauthorized protests near key infrastructure, a transport hub, or an oil refinery, and the fine is up to 600,000 euros. The new restrictions against filming police operations give activists more cause for concern, as does what they call the lack of coverage of the gag law in the mainstream media. Polls show that four out of five Spaniards oppose the law, including many journalists, although the editor of this conservative paper is not one of them. I don't think this is about freedom of expression. I think that violence by citizens is more dangerous than violence by police, who are there to enforce a rule of law. I honestly believe that this bill comes as a consequence of the extreme violence used by radical anti-establishment groups, which were responsible for extremely violent acts. We can't say this is a country that lacks freedom. 
But this is false. For example, in Madrid, in the last three years, there have been 11,600 demonstrations, out of which only 15 have required police intervention. The media linked to the government focus on a minority of incidents which appear to justify this legislation. This is a law intended to discourage citizens' movements and demonstrations and the media that have enough independence to inform people about those claims of protests and the possibility of an open debate. If we take the main television networks, for instance, none of them have stressed how brutally this law compromises citizens' rights. The same applies to the main radio stations and the mainstream press. Even newspapers such as El País have failed to report substantially on the importance and significance of this piece of legislation. In order to find a more detailed, more balanced analysis of this issue, we've had to rely on web-based news outlets. The once popular state broadcaster TVE has been left reeling by a decade of big changes. In 2006, the former socialist government of Jose Luis Zapatero changed the rules on how TVE's director was appointed, requiring a two-thirds majority in parliament. That meant both main parties had to come to a consensus for the position, making it harder for the government of the day to pick its own director. Zapatero also changed the funding model, banning advertising on TVE. When Rajoy took power in 2011, he re-established the old model for the director's appointment at TVE and put a party loyalist in the position. Then he took an ax to TVE's budget, although the head of the paper that has routinely supported the prime minister's party argues TVE's problems did not start with this government. It was Zapatero who ruined Spanish television by banning advertising, which reduced the budget by 650 million euros, and by ordering mass redundancies, sacking the most talented staff and employing mainly members from the Socialist Party. We need to give TVE back its advertising funding. It must again have a competitive workforce and interest in programming. We have to do this because of the irreparable damage done by the Zapatero government. The state broadcaster has experienced budget cuts, but bear in mind that while overall public spending was cut by 20 percent, at TVE, budgets were cut by 40 percent. It was absolutely brutal, and this was a matter of political will. We are not talking about an absolute necessity. We are talking about something intentional behind the reduction of these budgets. The results are plain to see. Audiences are not stupid. So while between 2006 and 2011, news bulletins on state television held the ratings lead, the drop in audience figures over the past three years has been remarkable. There is a clear logic operating between the policies of the past three years and the consequences. First, all state media is now under the control of a single ideological regime. Then you implement cutbacks, which limit its reach and relevance while making ample room for a fierce duopoly or oligopoly in commercial media. A state-owned broadcaster that is a shadow of its former self. Phantom protesters on the march in Madrid. An election year and a new party, Podemos, that like Syriza in Greece, was born of the protest movement and could well come to power. And the new gag law that will make those protests more difficult to organize, more difficult for journalists to cover. There's a lot of news coming out of Spain. The question is, how will the story be reported in Spain? On the download this week, our viewers on the gag law and the way the story is being covered in Spain. The gag law approved by the government of Mariano Rajoy has publicly imposed some restrictions to the freedom of expression and information in Spain. However, it is not only going to legislate on the public protests or strikes, but also on the way people cover these public events, without making any distinction between their participants and the media and journalists who are just doing their job.